gonna mug me. I'm not gonna mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the Peace and Marathon. Download Veely now. On Salvage Hunter. Hey. <laughs> Drew visits a theatre in Lincolnshire and is tempted by a cow. <laughs> you wouldn't buy that, would you? Just, that, watch, just watch us. <laughs> <laughs> he finds a huge hoard of lights in Cheshire, but there's a snag. They're just too they're just too battered. Jeff. And at a new salvage yard, he bargains hard for a fantastic find. Fifteen hundred quid. Damn, I can't pay you that. That's a walking away price. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Hello. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's an absolute gem. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. Look at that statue there. It's over 2,000 years old. No. In his hunt for treasure... No, nope, I'm going to keep those. ...everything has its price. I'll give you 500 pounds for them. Yeah, I'll take that. And there's nothing he won't buy. <laughs> you wouldn't buy that, would you? Just watch, just watch us. With help from his wife, Rebecca... You do what you do, and I'll do the selling here, then. ..and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. In Conwy, North Wales, it's an extra special day as ace salvage hunter Drew Pritchard prepares to launch a new business venture at Liberty's, a luxury department store in London. And just ratchet strap it to it. And then you can get both of those in there, then, and then the bench across the back. I'm over the moon that, that we've been invited to Liberty, because without doubt, let's not mess about, it is the number one and best retail environment in the world. It's a fantastic thing to be associated with. This is a major, major day for us. Drew's been on a buying frenzy. The van and truck are crammed with items carefully selected for the London market. Liberty of London is one of the oldest department stores in the capital. For almost 140 years, its Tudor-style building has been a landmark in the West End. And it now attracts more than 4 million shoppers per year from all over the world. Drew has been given a prime space on the fourth floor to sell his stock. And from a blank canvas, he must now create a first-class showroom. 21 years ago, when I started in the cellar of my parents' garage, I didn't think I'd end up in Liberty of London. It's quite amazing, but now I better make it work. I've got to get it right, and I've got to get it right first time. So, what I was going to say, I'm nervous because I've got to get, I think it's 160 items in. Cleaned, polished, labelled, set out, and looking good. And we'll have the row of the singer stools there. We'll just have to have a hoover around, chaps, after. I have to move everything at least ten times, cos you can't afford to make a mistake here. I'm still not sure about that leather armchair being there, cos there's leather, 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 leather. Keeps coming over and changing his mind, which annoys me, but he's the boss. For the first time, Drew's team won't be selling his stock. That role will be left to the Liberty staff. There's another one down the far end as well. Th this is the first time that... I've really left any of my items for somebody else to sell unless it was in our shop. And we've got a considerable investment in this as well. This is big bucks. But I trust them, they're professionals. These people are here for a reason, because they're very good at their job. By end of day, they've made considerable progress. But they're still not quite there. Day's just gone. Just, you know, eight hours gone, nine hours gone. We've got, hopefully we can stay for another hour or so. Um, and just see if we can knock on the head just a little bit more. But we're getting there. After a very late night, Drew Pritchard at Liberty is ready to open. And its first visitor has a very discerning eye. Oh, my God. Drew? What do you think? Fantastic. It's good, isn't it? This has come out really well. It's like five furs into one. Yeah, oh, and it's more. just... Look. It's lovely, isn't it? Looks like you've always been here. That's it. That's Doesn't what I was it? after. I wanted it to look like it had been at Liberty Shop forever and evolved. Yes. My first reaction was actually shock. It was 
It was like walking into an Aladdin's cave that was so organised, so sort of sparkly and alive that um, it actually took my breath away. And these little rooms. Yeah. And gentleman's study. Yes. That nice hallway. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. It looks perfect. It feels right. It feels normal to be here. It feels right to be here. The showroom is completed and Drew's work is done. Drew's got to get back in the van and keep buying, buying and buying. I mean, this room is a vast room to fill. And when one major item goes, it's going to look empty. He's got to get back in the old van. Only time will tell if the new venture will be a success. Meanwhile, it's back to the day job. Am I driving? Unfortunately. This time, Drew's back in the old van with a different mate, a colleague from the antiques trade, Rob Black. They're travelling 180 miles east from Conwy to the medieval town of Stamford in Lincolnshire. Well, I didn't realise Stamford was actually this pretty. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a gem of a place, isn't it? I didn't realise. Stamford is more than a 1,000 years old and was once one of the largest towns in England. Today, it's known for its lovely stone buildings and its antiques trade. Drew has made a new contact and hopes to get his hands on some fresh salvage that's not available on the open market. We're off to meet uh, two blokes called uh, Mick and Roger. They run the old Corn Exchange Theatre. They've called us in because they've got some lighting and seating to get rid of. Oh, OK. The original building was built in 1857. Uh, as a corn exchange, so it's a business centre, but they always built it as a multi-purpose building with a stage so that local uh, people could put on shows. But it had got dilapidated. Mick Lee and Roger Bradshaw had acted and stage managed at the theatre for decades. In 1999, they set up a charitable trust to save the building and slowly transformed it into a thriving theatre. I'm looking forward to meeting Drew. You know, it's a new pair of eyes yeah. that will look at stuff that we Sir. perhaps can't use. And... See if Drew can give us a food bob for our charity. Hello. 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 Who's, who's Roger? Morning. Which one's Hello, Mick? I'm Roger. Roger, right. hey. Hi, Drew. Uh, therefore, I'm Mick. Mick. <laughs> Good to meet you. Hello, I'm Rob. All right, Rob. Hi. All right, Roger. Thank you very much. Right, so where to? Yeah. yeah. Straight Come upstairs. upstairs. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. We've got straight well, upstairs. Straight up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. So yes. the whole building's restored now. Yeah, yeah include brand new windows in the front. Brand new. Interesting. Yeah. That's right. Oh, there you go. Wallet. That's great, isn't it? We've yeah. put the new floor in to give it a rake so everybody can see. Victorian floor. But it's very yeah. steep, isn't it? Steeper than... It, yeah. it, it, it is a little we bit, but... It... get people worrying about that, but then nobody complains they can't see. <laughs> well, there is that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, this right. Is, this is nice. I like it a lot. So how many people can you seat? Well, 399. Officially. It's very important, that 399. Oh, <laughs> Once you get to 400, there uh, are different rules and regulations. You have to have a fire curtain mm, and yeah. a wet sprinkler system and interlock yeah. fire alarms and Various a lot more things. money. So, basically, we yeah. kept under the threshold by one seat, cos one extra seat wouldn't be worth no. the expenditure. No, 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 no. Oh, it's nice. I'm really glad that it's working for you. But you know why we're here, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you've got to look at something now. You've got to have a look at anything got. you've got, yeah. yeah? OK. Their first stop is an old orchestra pit under the stage. We've got a few bits that might be of interest in here. Oh, I see. There is some music stands under there. Black ones with a nice I like that one. crow's feet That's on them. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, you were going to I thought you were going to say. Ah, I like the look of this one. They're a bit battered. Quite like these two. Yeah. Can we pull them out? You're not using these, are you? No, no, no that's no. why they're under here. <laughs> the music stands date to the early 1900s and feature a decorative base, original lights and black paint. Restored, they could fetch roughly £240 each. OK. Right. For sale? Yes. yes for sale. What, what do you like? Well, we would like as much as possible for you with one price. For our charity. For your, oh, here we go. Pull him out. <laughs> <laughs> one price. Yeah. 120 quid the pair. 175. Oh, no. No? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. One, um, 
Let's get some uh, 70 quid each, 140. Um, you've gone down. From your price, yes, I've gone up. Is it 120? I've gone up. I thought it was 150. I thought it was 115, okay. wasn't it? 140 then. 140. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. There's a pair of these, and they're big, and the best thing for me, they've got the original paint surface. And I love old black paint, because when you polish it, it just looks great. This is the stage, and we've got all the old hemp lines, so everything's done with the, the old lines. What are they called? Fly, fly lines. Yeah. Fly lines, yeah. Fly lines, that's I it. I shouldn't right. jump. No, don't jump no, without your knees. Not at my age. So, uh... That's quite a drop for you as well, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Ronnie calls it. it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Do you get this all Co day? Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Never <laughs> stops. <laughs> One purchase in the bag, and the team move on. So what's all this, the little museum? Little museum of bits that we've gathered from the history of the building. And... OK, so we've got some seats, so these, these are slightly are later. Seats. Those are the earlier ones, again. Those are the oldest again. ones, yeah. 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 Sort of getting into the Art Nouveau. Oh, yeah, I wish we'd kept more of those. We destroyed about 300 of them. <laughs> <laughs> it, it happens, it happens. Yeah. And some these of, are the spot lamps you were talking some about. Some of our lamps. We've got more than that. That's oh, just a sample, these of, these are a sample of the lights that we've got that we just kept in here. We, to... we get offered this one. Yes. All the time. OK. This one every other day. OK. And this one not so often. Oh, right. We've yeah. got some of them. Yeah. But have you got any of these on yes. stands? Uh, on no, the metal base? No. They would have all been hung. OK. Yeah, so there's, there's no stands now. Unfortunately for them, I don't need one lamp. I need 60 that are interesting, not one. Um, so would you be interested in that larger one, Drew? No. Oh, just as a hanging thing, it's no good. No, we've no stands. OK. Sorry to say. Is there anywhere else for us to see? Well, I've got quite a lot of stuff in my uh, uh, store shed at home, which is... Um, theatre stuff? Well, there, are, there is some theatre stuff, but mainly it's old ironmongery stuff, coming back quite a few years. You might be interested. What, door fittings and stuff like that? Yeah, various things, yeah. Handles and lights and lamps and... Yes. It's a lot of stock from an old ironmonger, you see. Yeah. There's always an inkling with people. You think, I wonder what else he's got. He's the type of guy. So we're going off to um, Mick's house now, down the road. Mick took over an ironmonger's shop in the 1970s and ran it for 30 years, but couldn't bear to part with some of the old stock. Thank you. You've got a snooker table, that's great. Brilliant. And this is the stuff well, from... Well, this is the, some of the stuff, of yeah, it. from the old ironmongers. And the lamps. Yeah. And most of this stuff was left in the storeroom. Fascinating. So when it closed, I had to put it somewhere. I just couldn't bring myself to throw it away. It's a weird mixture of stuff, just bits of things, all of them brilliant. You know, just amazing bits of old lamps and there's bits of printing materials and there's bits of plumbing materials and hardware and door knockers and God knows what. God, this is like a little snapshot back in time, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Look at those. There's no telling what you'd do with that. Anything you like. <laughs> <laughs> You certainly get a... Yeah, no. <laughs> I think we'll leave that there. No. Cough. Oh, it's for uh, playing the xylophone. <laughs> could well be. What on earth are they for? I, should I suggest that's non... Conductive. Conductive, so it's yeah. for getting an electrical pulse across. Yeah, possibly yeah. so. Possibly well, so, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Something like that. I like this. I'm literally... I'd just gone back to as a child and just opening Christmas, but it was just... Oh, look at that, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are wonderful. I really want it all. For me. I just want it. All of it. Now, I want to take it home. I love it all. The box's contents date to Victorian times, but many of the items have never been used. It would take hours to sift through them, so the total value is... anyone's guess. I've got to take a stab in the dark and go... Yeah, right, it's worth about that. Let's have a go at that. What it's worth to me, really, is what it's worth. That lot, those lamps, don't want the till, don't want the other thing. No. 350 quid. I think I'd want more than that. Would you? A salvager Drew Pritchard is in the historic town of Stamford in Lincolnshire at Mick Lee's Outbuildings, where he's discovered some boxes of intriguing Victorian odds and ends. <laughs> <laughs> But his offer of £350 for the lot has not been well received. I think I'd want more than that. Would you? Mm. OK, let's have another go. 
Uh, <laughs> all the lamps, yeah. all the boxes, 500 quid. You're getting nearer. I'm getting near an end. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting nearer. Have a look at the rest, then, before you... Over here? Yeah, over the top. Well, there's stuff over here as well I'd like oh. to look off. Oh, I'm not sure about them. Aren't you? Well, I'm rather chuffed with them. OK. These two items hung in Nick's old ironmonger's shop. The first displays how gun cartridges were made. The second shows the type of cartridges that were for sale. Dating back to the early 20th century, their combined price is around £3,000. The mirror, yeah. I'll give you £800. for. Would you really? Yes, I would. It's a rare beast. That one? Yeah. 450. 1250 the pair. Okay. Okay. Are, are we are we doing deals? Are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking of these two. I think I'm ready for you to take them out of the way. I, I can't pay any more for them. Is that all right? Yeah. That'll do. Okay. We'll look at the top though. Look at the top. What are we going to do about these chaps? You can't do make... I have to decide now? No. Well, let's go and look at the top. Let's then. go and look at the top. Go on then. We sort of delayed the deal because Mick says, well. I've got another shed if you want. <laughs> I want to go through everything Mick's ever got. And more bits. That's all new as well. <laughs> no, but there's more than that, but I didn't know, think you'd have time to look at it all. Oh, you're joking. Fantastic. <gasps> Where's the ticket? Oh, no. That's the, that's the pantomime cow. <laughs> yeah. Is it for sale? <laughs> you wouldn't buy that, would you? Just, wa just watch us. <laughs> <laughs> this panto cow's head was handmade with papier-mâché in the early 20th century. Wiring in the back lets the ears, jaw and eyes move, but the newer white fabric would have to be stripped. As is, she's worth around £350. I've got a figure in mind. Yeah? 150 Sold. Sold. What it is, to me, is a little piece of English folk art. I've just fallen in love with a cow. What about, while we're at it, the mirror and the cartridge case thing? Yeah, I'm selling it to you for the price you said. Yeah. Mick is just a pleasure to deal with, a lovely, a lovely bloke. And you do not get the chance to buy this collection of stuff every day. All absolutely fresh to the market, and that's a good thing. And they're all, which I love, unrestored. Did you manage to move it OK? I moved it OK. I think I'm, it's gone very well. I've had very... a fantastic day. I think my wife will be the most delighted because she's always thought I collected a load of junk, and now I can prove her wrong. Thank Cheers, you. guys. Bye. See you. Bye. See ya. Cheers. What a great day. Oh, that was good. That was is the best collection of sheds I've ever seen, that loan what was in them. And it was all really sort of my type of stuff. Yeah. Well, that's what I like, but it was all sort of blokey, really English. Yeah. Um, gear. Anyway, right, all we've got to do now is restore all of it, clean all of it, photograph all of it, list all of it, and then sell all of it and deliver all of it. Yeah. And drive home. Oh, yeah, there is that as well. That's the terrifying bit. It is when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> Safely driven back to Conway, Drew has plenty to show Rebecca and the team. Hi. Hello, chaps. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Buttercup. Is it buttercup? <laughs> Carl, put present for you. This is yeah. a proper, very early 20th century, Papier-mâché, pantomime, cow. Theatre. Theatre. You like this, you two? I've got the rest of the body as well, so you just got to pick <laughs> who's front and back. Uh, I'll go front. <laughs> <laughs> we went down to a, a theatre in Stamford, and we got a couple of bits from there, and look at that. That's a rare thing, a very rare thing. Cartridges? Yes. So you can date those, Rob. What sort of age are we looking at? 1900, 1910. So, uh, really? Yeah, they're quite rare. To have all the, the component parts. I'm bored already. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the value, I think, in all the cartridge paraphernalia, but that's so blokey, it, you know, it leaves me cold. Uh, what? 
offices bits. Are there? Yeah. Little bits. There is all sorts of stuff in here. You've got plumbers' forms. There's just so many bits that I haven't completely gone through yet. The stuff that... I mean, look, that's brand new. Well, what... what... It's a load of tat, isn't it? It's not a load of tat. Look. It's great. I was a bit disappointed to start with. It's like a man's drawer. It's full of bits that you never want to throw away, but it might come in useful one day. Burton's. The tailors of taste. But we'll have a route, and you never know. There might be a few gems hidden in there. Drew is adamant there is. It's Ooh. bits. It's bits. It's smalls, and they sell well. I'm going to put do. a lot of them into Liberty, all polished up and done, a case full of gun parts. Yeah, look lovely. Look lovely. Mm. It's not long before the boxes turn up trumps, as Carl the electrician unearths some early 20th century brass galleries. It's a nice little... I haven't actually seen one of these before. A nice little find. Even better, he's also found the original glass shades to match. Yes. They'll fit nicely. Not very pretty, but historically one of the earliest ones I've ever seen. I really like this one. I wonder if Drew will let me buy it. Gavin, meanwhile, has the starring role in the photo shoot of the Panto Cow. An invisible mate is assigned to the back end. All right, I should have got off. What are you doing now? But there's no customers in the shop. Who's in the back? Alan. <laughs> Left That's the worst socks. job in the world, Alan. <laughs> it was so funny. Salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is ready to hit the road again with his regular sidekick, T. But in T's absence, something seems to have gone terribly wrong. It's just horrible. No, no, tell me what no, you're it's taking horrible. out with it. It's like as if you've gone round Enzo's kennel found all the bits of hair that have come off him and stuck them on your face. It looks horrible. Right, so, so I'm taking hair advice from you. Aye, aye. At least I've looked after myself. Actually, myself still actually, coming. excuse me, look, look. I'm looking after myself. You look like, I don't know what you look like. You look like, look like a character from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> We're going on an adventure. Hey! <laughs> the adventure starts with a 50-mile drive from Conwy to the town of Bevington, located just 15 minutes southwest of Liverpool across the River Mersey. We're on the doorstep. We've got a house call. Uh, we're going to Poulton Hall um, on the Wirral. We are going to see Sherard Lancelin Green. Nice. Proper name. Proper name. And uh, he owns a hall. And you would, wouldn't you, with a moniker like that? Yes, you would, definitely. Sherard Lancelin Green's family has lived on these grounds for nine centuries. Today, Poulton Hall is not just Girard's home, it also sustains the family's long association with the theatre. Uh, well, I run a business called uh, Lancelin Theatre Supplies, or Lancelin Lighting, and uh, we do have a smaller branch here which does manufacturing, uh, and it's based in some of the old farm buildings, including the hayloft. Not quite sure what Drew will like, but we've got various theatrical artefacts and uh, some old stage lighting which might be of interest. A hall. Same family on site for nearly a thousand years. Surely there's got to be something. There's got to be something good there. Hi there. Sherrod? Hello. Drew, yes. nice to meet Hello. you. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. Oh, well, look, thanks for having us here today. It's a very interesting house. I sort of can't wait to go inside and have a look around. That would be all right. Inside, yeah. <laughs> So, and there, uh, quite a collection. Bits and bobs here. Oh, I like him. That's, what's that big bird there? Bittern. A bittern. That's yes. nice, isn't it? That's lovely. So you're a collector? No, no, no. It's just the accumulation of centuries of bits and pieces. <laughs> they don't is... really have antiques so much as curiosities, such as this gong, which is uh, made out of First World War shells. Yes. Different tone for each course, is it? Yes, indeed. Yes, <laughs> it rings. You can actually do it. And they're all 
got the um, field of battle engraved on them. Well, that's... that's a... Trones wood. Do you know what? It's this sort of thing that's selling better now. People are sort of bored of normal antiques, so anything that's just a bit mm -hmm. off the wall, a bit different... I love that. It's great. As you walk into the house, there's a, 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 a strange collection of things. This place potentially has got an awful lot of promise. As this is Girard's family home, none of the objects in the main house are for sale, but there may be some items for Drew in the attic and other outbuildings. This is our water cold tank. water tank. And what are these maps? Those are maps, yes, they're all schoolroom maps. Oh, no, nice. Mm. Schoolroom map of Ireland, Palestine. Are those something you'd want to get rid of or not? Oh, I might um, release the odd one. Maps like these were made for school classrooms in the 19th century. Not many of this age have survived to the present day. In good condition, they could sell for up to £300 each. Really fragile, aren't they? Yes. Do you know, I don't even think we can unwrap these without doing damage. Being perfectly honest, I know very, very little about maps. So I could be looking at something really rare. But one thing I do know about is condition, 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 and uh, they're not in good condition. They're literally crumbling as we touch them. I think the condition's going against these. Really. Yes. It's going to be so difficult for me to frame them up. Yes. Um, God, interesting. Oh, no. Amazing, mm, interesting. Yeah. Nothing in here for us, and nothing in the house is for sale. So, fingers crossed for the outbuildings. OK, so what's this shed? Well, Lighting. This is, this is a... A store used by the, the business for lighting equipment and... Uh, but up on the top there is our sort of uh, junk store. Oh, there you go, that's so me. So that's your, that your sounds, sort of area. Do that sounds like my... And... Yeah, please. It didn't, it didn't even ask, then. I just sort of pushed <laughs> no, you aside. Right, yes. Limey, yeah. Lighting junkyard. Do you have any that are on wheels or stands? We don't have any stands. Don't no, have any yeah. stands. Okay. I do fancy these great big ones, but they're in terrible condition. These fall into two categories: ones that I can sell and ones that I can't. It's really simple. So I went through the whole lot, and there's a good couple of hundred up there that you know might be right, and every single one has got too many faults. There's a reason why they're up there, and the reason is they're all broken, missing major components, missing lenses, or so badly smashed that the cases not be repaired. Lens is missing from that one. That one's got the lens, but the body's completely gone. Yeah. It's a different model to that one. Yes. And it goes on and on. I really, I really only buy them with the stands whenever possible. Mm. Or if I've got a stand, everything can be repaired. Financially, it's not going to work out. I think if we'd have found a pair on stands, bashed, then it would be worth it. But without the stands, without the hangers, without the lenses, they're just parts and parts I've got. No, they're, they're, just, too, they're just too battered. Yes. Just too battered. That's a shame. See, there's about 200 lamps up here. None of them any good. Doesn't normally stop, yeah? Mostly. <laughs> mostly too modern. 200 lamps. So far, drawing a blank. Um, but it's a big place, so you just never know. Just need that one thing. I'm not very far from home. If I can find one thing that'll pay for the day, we're off. What's this workshop space? Yes, it's a sort of works department. There's some cast iron bench ends in here. They mostly look. Oh yes. See, these are actually quite nice. Missing one piece. Oh no. Oh yes. Do you want to dig them out? Wouldn't mind actually. T. Do you want to go around that side? Yeah. Um, is this something you'd want to get rid of before I go pulling, we could do, pulling, yes, pulling yes, things yes, out yes, of here? Yes, we could do. Mm. I sell garden antiques all year round. The sun's shining somewhere, but I only like to buy the really good stuff or the rare stuff or the just downright interesting and these fall somewhere between rare and interesting with the addition of a few wooden slats these mid 19th century cast iron ends could be turned into an elegant double-sided garden bench with seating for two people on each side restored it would fetch around 1300 pounds um what would you want for them if you want to get rid of them? They're all right. They've got a couple of minor problems. They've got mm. a crack in the lug there. Don't know. I think I paid about sixty pounds for them or something like that. So God, you a got a, many years ago. You got a very very good price. <laughs> yes, mind you, that was some years ago. That was some years ago. Yes. Well, I'll happily give you a profit on them. So what would you like? Ooh, hundred and twenty. Double your money. Mm -hmm. That's still a very good deal for me. 
Is it? Yeah. But I'm going to say yes. No, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> that wasn't I'll holding say my, yes. wasn't holding my hand out, was it? <laughs> um, yeah. 120. Look, what's fair? 150 quid. Go on, yes. Yeah. Bit of a bargain for yes. me. And you've made a few quid. Yeah. The cast iron bench ends was a steal, to be honest with you. Incredibly cheap. But um, he got it even cheaper than me. He got it for, I think, he thinks 60 quid. That has to be the buy of the century. This is quite a rare and desirable item. See? Again. <laughs> Oh, like your mother. Yeah, got an empty substitute. Today ended up as a good day. I mean, we started out badly. It just wasn't going anywhere. And I'd already having to contend with T's new beard, which I don't quite know what on earth he's thinking of. It's been a strange day, but we've ended up buying something really good at the end of it. And there's a good profit there. We're done. Who thought we weren't going to find anything? There. Oh, right, well, yeah. that's good. I thought you weren't going to find anything. <laughs> anyway, thank you. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, bye. bye. Well, whew. got something out of the day. I did. At the last minute. And a good something. Right now, I need garden stock at, uh, at Liberty. It's amazing what's lurking in sheds, isn't it? It is. You, normally. <laughs> yeah, I do like a good shed. Before heading home, Drew has one more stop in Cheshire, 25 miles down the road in the village of Tarpoli. The van is almost empty and Drew has high hopes of filling it with more stock. We're off to see a guy called Jeff Pierce. He set up a brand new salvage yard. Excellent. There's not many of those around. Mostly, they're closing. They're not opening. Jeff and Gina Pierce opened Reclaimed World about a year ago. They've been filling the three-acre site ever since, salvaging local schools, offices and churches. It all started as a passion. I was a collector, if you like, of old salvage things for many, many years. And now it's just built up and built up that we've turned it into a business. I would hope today that Drew could find some little gems hidden away. It'll probably be something that I don't think is any good. Yeah. He'll love it, you know. Oh, here we go. It's a new yard, and they are definitely the ones to go to because every new dealer, when they start, saves their best things for the first year and then puts them all straight in for sale so you get the better pieces straight away. Hello there. Hi, Drew. I'm Hi. Jeff. How are you Hi. doing? Thanks Jeff, for coming. Nice to meet you. I'm Gina. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi. Hello. Good. Hi. Here's T. Hi, T. How are you doing? Pleased to meet you. Hi, T. Hi, Well, we've, we've uh, heard you've recently-ish opened. Yes. So yeah. we thought we'd uh, come down and have a look. Great, mate. See what you're doing. Yeah. You so it's a bit of everything that. here. What I tried to do here, Drew, I've tried to... Little showroom over there, timbers on this section here. Yeah. Metal section over here, so to keep all the metal together. Over here, obviously, there's another showroom. I'll leave you to it. Yeah, Bye. nice to meet you. See you later. See you later. Bye. Um, can we have a look in the warehouse there? Yeah, certainly, yeah. Come on. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm drawn to, there's one thing here that I spotted as soon as I walked in the door, something that I really quite like. I'm just wondering if you can tell me a bit more about them. Yeah. Are those two plaques there? Yeah, well, OK. They belong to a pal of mine who spends his life restoring Grade 2 listed buildings, and I mean really old buildings. Yeah. And he's not poor, unfortunately. He's not well at the moment, and he's, he's had, a, to he's sell had a stroke. He's had a stroke. These 19th century timber overdoors feature ornate curves exquisitely carved in the French Rococo style, making the pair worth about 1,200 pounds. Hmm. How much are they for the pair? Um, you know, Drew, it's got to be sensible, hasn't it? I think, that, I think they've got to be in the region of... I thought they were... When they first came in, I thought they were special, and I thought they were worth... A thousand quid. That's what I thought. But to the trade, you've got to make a living, Drew, and you've probably got the right customer for them. I would, to you, I wouldn't let them go any less than seven hundred quid. The pair. Yes, I'll take them. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, help your pal out and help me out as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a quid to be made there. Yeah. Jeff told me selling them for a friend who's been ill, so immediately, so a little bit of pressure. That's okay. Um, Shouldn't really pay any more, but I ended up paying 700. 
That's fine. So, uh, where to next then, Jeff? Can we have a look over yeah, there? Yeah, have a look at the... Uh, there's a bit of a metal section there, Drew, you might like. I can just show you this clock here. There's a story behind this. Let me show you. It's cast iron. It's come off um, Vernon's Pools in Liverpool. It was an Art Deco building, four-sided clock. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, Demolition, dropped it, and I got the four clocks off it. That's the inner, the outer. That, I was going to say it's broken because yeah. yeah. the ring. The inner, this one, I've got the outer, the broken inner, but I've got one back at our place that is still intact. It's a shame it's been painted, isn't it? Yeah, but you might like the condition it was in before, but... It... Yes. Are the other ones untouched? In the original, yeah. OK. When the original clock face hung on the four-sided tower, it was considerably larger with the outer ring in place, making it more desirable. Luckily, Jeff has one of the complete clock faces round the back. This, this, this I'm presuming, is the outside edge to that one back there, yeah? Exactly, yeah. They're together on a pallet. The chapter ring that's missing from the one on the wall in the other side of the yard is on top, but underneath is the thing that really interests me, which is the unrestored, untouched and complete clock face. Under the dirt and rust lies a hidden gem. The 1920s clock face with its provenance is a real designer item and could be hung on the wall as a statement piece. Restored, it's worth around £2,000. It's a shame about the finger on that one's gone, but it's repairable, it can be, it can be fixed. Give us a give us a figure. What sort of where do you need to be with it? Okay. If I said to you, let's, let's, if I said to you, give me five hundred quid for the pair. Um. The only value in the other one to me is that finger, and I'm just buying that for the finger. I'd rather keep it, Andrew, honestly, because yeah. I could I could, I could trade it on. I'll pay you two fifty for that one. You keep the other one. Great. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Great. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Now, that is big and heavy, too. It is big and Very heavy. Very big and heavy. And ironic that you bought a big clock when your timekeeping is appalling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just... late <laughs> for everything. Ask Jeff for a price. He's trade, he's dealer. I can ask him straight out, and he says, da 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 da, bish bash bosh, £250. Bite his hand right off. £250 for that, Christmas. Absolute gift, love it. So, um, have we got anywhere else to see? One more place. We have a look in here, just on the left here. Have a look, see what you can see in here. So what's this? Just more storage, more flooring? Just more storage of uh, flooring and, and lights. I tend to get a lot of lights through from, uh, from jobs. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's from an old church. Sure. Have we got a ladder? Can yeah, we get up there? Yeah, let me just read yeah. oh, These for sale, yeah? Yep, yeah, I'll sell them. Right on the top shelf, out the way, keep them safe, are some very ornate, 19th century, late 19th century, pendant lights of the type that I love. These are the best example of that type of light you can find. It couldn't, they couldn't be any better. There are four large lights and 11 smaller ones on offer. The large ones are especially appealing because of their size, original bronze finished galleries and the iridescent quality of the glass. Once restored, the collection could fetch about 4,000 pounds. OK. Prices. What do you want? You tell me, cos you're... No. Go on, you it's tell me. Dealer you're... to dealer now. Come on. Um, I'm not all, you know, you're a big boy. No, no, OK. <laughs> Go on. I would like... And I'd like to buy galleries as well. I'll take the lot. All of them. Take, I'll take them all. 1,500 quid. Damn. Drew Pritchard is at a new salvage yard in Cheshire, where he's found a valuable set of 1930s lights. I'll take the lot, all them. Take, I'll take them all. But is the asking price from owner Jeff Pierce too high? Fifteen hundred quid. Damn. Why? Because it's too much money. How much too much money? A lot too much money. These are. I'm not going to lie okay, to you. You and I both know these are excellent, but I can't pay you that. Say what we'll do. Fifteen hundred pound is 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 not going to happen. That's one. That's that's where I'm at. That, that's just no. That's a walking away price, which I don't want to walk away from. I do want to buy them. They're great. Okay. What I'd like to do then, if you're prepared to take the whole lot, what we see here, yeah. everything, even yeah. down there. 
All right, yeah, give us a price for... The whole lot? Everything. Okay. Everything. Right. How about if I said to you, for the lot, mm. 1,200 quid? How does that sound? Those ones over there have got no galleries. No. And I can see from here one's scrap anyway. Okay. Too chipped. I'm happy. My valuation is I'm buying these and they're more or less getting thrown in. Because by the time I bought the galleries and rewired them, da 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 da, you know. You'd like to give me a grand for them, wouldn't you? They've got to be a grand all day long. If I just stand here, Come on. are you just going <laughs> to keep it, going that's down? That's it, that's it, that's the last one. I was going to say I was going to give you 800 quid. No, but, no. but, but if it includes all of those yeah. and that and that and all of those, a grand is fine. Thank Good you. Job. That's Thanks. where I wanted to be. Great. Great. As long as Very you're happy and I'm that. happy, we're both happy now. These are rare, interesting, desirable, cool, oversized, and as found, it just ticks every single box. Perfect, perfect day. One hour from home full van of the best kit. Jeff is a very, very good guy to know. This is going to be a regular stopping point, that's for sure. Oh. Well, it's been a good day for me today. I am pleased some of the pieces Drew bought are good, and it gives me now the money to go and buy more. And I hope I see Drew again. I hope he comes and sees us again. I hope I can find some goodies for him. Finished? Yep. Absolutely. Jeff, a pleasure. Thanks. My really pleasure enjoyed it. Well. Really Thank you very much, Jeff. Thanks, Lovely to meet you. Really enjoyed it. Cheers. Thanks Good luck. for coming. I'll, I will. <laughs> I'll be coming back. Can you come <laughs> back next year? Give me a year to collect some goodies together for you. Oh, well, yeah, I'll give you a week. Six months. All right. Cheers. Thanks. Take care. Thank you. Cool. Well, we did well. We did. Very well. Good day. Very good. Very good. Cracking, cracking stock. That clock face, that sealed the deal on the day. Yeah. There's the money. There's the money all day long. There's that the wages. Yours are my wages for the week. I couldn't believe it when he came out at 250 quid. I was thinking, right, I'll pay 800, yeah. seven, 800 pounds for that. 250 pounds, what am I supposed to do? Trade. Yeah. That's it. Hey, you know. Cracking timepiece. Okay. Hey, crack, you need a big strap, though, wouldn't you, for your <laughs> wrist? A really big one. It'd be like Flavor Flav. I could yeah. have a massive one around my neck. <laughs> Gangster rapper. Back in Conway, everyone's eager to see what Drew's brought home. Come on. <laughs> Should I try that? <laughs> <laughs> have you had a good time? Yeah, great. Yeah. Into Reclaimed World over in Cheshire. It's going down the road. Yeah. Hour. Oh, cool. Down. Right, what do we rent. usually pay for these, Gov? <laughs> uh, quite a lot. Quite a lot. 250 quid. Fantastic. Whoops. <sighs> Look at that. That's just. Great size. Bargain. Anyway, let's get it inside. You're over there. How cool's that? It's we just roll it. Fast. Absolute steel. That's... And then it gets better. It does get better. <laughs> Do you know I like a lamp? Yes. Well, it won't be the first time you've seen this particular one, but these are better. Oh, they are better than ours. It's almost like an iridescent, slight iridescence to the glass. Incredibly chunky. And with, no. look at that. No. Look at the colour. They're beautiful. They flow from the gallery right the way down. I absolutely adore them. And they just shout a really good profit, actually. We've got more stuff. Have a look at this as well. Now, this initially might look like something I'd have bought 15 years ago. And when T puts it the right way up, <laughs> we'll be <laughs> able to tell. <laughs> They're French carved fruitwood overdoors. Overdoors? They're ah. overdoors. But look at the Seems detail. Look at these. It's wonderful, actually. Yes. It's beautifully done. Beautifully done. And a pair of. Oh. 700 quid the pair. 
but they're just, they're just good. Aren't they? They're good. Really? Yes. They're differently good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Odd. And sometimes. Nice. Is that what you saw in Drury originally then? Yeah. <laughs> odd, odd <laughs> and cheap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the French overdoors are very decorative, strange colour, but the carving is amazing. They must have a place somewhere. And Drew has one more excellent find for Rebecca. The Poulton Hall bench ends. What do you think? Fantastic. And they're a bargain. And I've, I've seen them before, but they're always broken. The arms are always broken off. Turn it into a good two-seater, double-sided. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it liquor paint straight into Liberty. Sad, they're selling out of all the garden benches yes. we put in there. Very pleased with those. The team gets straight to work, while Alary takes photos of the clock. Alex, the French polisher, sets two on the bench ends Drew has brought back from Poulton Hall. First, he cuts mahogany to size to make two seats. The backrests are trickier, as they must be precisely angled on both sides. Well, that should do it. It's the right angle. It's Gavin's job to assemble all the pieces. Colour, the bench is transformed and ready for Drew to inspect. Super, really nice job. It's nice, classy, classy, lovely, beautiful. It's time for Rebecca to make a return visit to Liberty. She's here to check on the showroom, see how sales are going, and give Drew an update. The stalls are selling, the, the fire guard with the green cushions. That sold within two hours this morning. They sold one of the cafe tables with the one-legged cafe tables. We've had quite a few sales uh, to date. In fact, a large number of sales, which is great. Drew and I were a bit apprehensive to start with. Um, it's, it's unknown, and it's unknown to Liberty as well. So for both of us, um, it's a learning curve, and it's a learning curve that so far is working. And the knickknacks from Mix Shed in Stamford look right at home. From those boxes that I poo pooed and said, oh my God, what are you doing? We've got the trivets down there, we've got lighting in the cupboards. So from Mix Shed, they're actually in Liberty, London. I mean, humble pie or what? 